Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Patterns, Level 7, Causal Patterns at Varying Scale. You'll want to make sure you've watched the video on causal patterns. Just like in that video, we'll be defining causal patterns within a system. You can see there's a lot of concepts we'll deal with. As always, we'll start by defining the system we're going to investigate. But the scale at which we investigate that system will, will vary, both in size and time. We're going to be looking for causal patterns. Remember, identifying the causal relationships first and then identifying what are those overarching patterns. If we think about the objects that represent these ideas, the biggest one will be the green arrow of causation, going from the effect and working backwards to figure out what's causing that. But once we have identified all the causal relationships, we'll start looking for patterns. Remember, patterns are just looking more carefully carefully what do we see but the scale block should remind you that we're looking at an object that is at a different scale than we really need to look at to understand it so we'll be changing back and forth towards small scales long scales short scales time scales so we're going to shift our scales quite a bit as we go through this by the end of that of watching this video you should be able to identify um, scale causal patterns in something like a old school um, tape recorder or a little chemistry demo. But I'm gonna start by showing you my thinking when it comes to this little pullback toy. So let me grab that. Okay, so this toy is pretty simple. You can see when I pull the spoiler back uh, and then let it go, you can see that the wheels start to move. So if I were to try that again and put it down on the table, then it's just gonna drive out of the way. But all I'm really seeing is me pulling down on this um, spoiler and then the car going. There's a lot of things that I actually can't see. So first of all, let me define the system. So the system is going to be this toy car and we're gonna change the scale at which we understand this system. So let me define the system. We're gonna start by looking at, at the large scale and then we're gonna to drift towards more of a small scale, what's going on as we look for patterns. First of all, let me do things that are large scale patterns. So these are gonna be above the word scale. Let me show you all the things that I see taking place. So the big things that take place is I pull down on the spoiler, that causes the rear wheels to spin, which causes the car to drive. These are all things that I can see at a large scale. But what we're gonna have to do to figure out exactly how this car works is we're gonna have to take it apart. There's a lot of mechanisms and things that I can't see just by looking at it from the outside. So let me show you what that looks like when I take a car apart. So there are a lot of things going on on the inside. If we look at the spoiler itself, when I pull down on the spoiler, you can see when I pull on that, we can see these gears are actually going up. An interesting th thing that I also found is that this little arm here. And so that arm, when it goes down, is gonna be important. If we look at the front wheel, there's not much excitement there. But if we look on the back wheel, you can see there's this little bar that I lift up. And what it does when I do that is it turns a gear and then it stores some energy in a spring. And then for me to actually make it go, I have to hit this button here and then it runs. And so let me get this out of the way and show you what's going on at that small scale. So the first causal pattern I see is when you pull down on the spoiler, what you're really doing is lifting this arm and that arm in turn turns the gear and that compresses the spring. There's another causal pattern that I see as well. Okay, the other thing that I thought was interesting is when you actually let go of the spoiler, then that arm hits this part and lets it go. And so I would also show that causal pattern of, I would put that right here, you're releasing the spoiler. So you pull the spoiler and it does one thing, but when you release the spoiler, that releases the spring and that causes the rear wheels to spin and then the car to drive. And so we've identified not only the causal patterns, but we've started to identify what are the causal patterns at scale. We could represent everything 
below this dotted line as within the car. In other words, the scale inside the car. Now this is pretty simple if we're looking at something like a car, but it'll become really important if we're looking inside like a chemical reaction or inside a cell, what's happening at that scale? What kind of a pattern do I see? Even though it seems to branch, we would call this a linear pattern that always starts with pulling the spoiler down and then the car driving. There's no kind of a cycle that's going on here. It all just goes in one direction. So let me get this out of the way and then I'm going to give you a different object that you should go through and try to figure out the causal patterns in. All right, for the second example, we're going to look at phone evolution over time. So we've got these four phones. Let me label those. Okay, so the four phones that we have, and I put them in chronological order. So the first is this handhold mobile, then a flip phone, then the Blackberry, and then the iPhone. And so the scale that we're gonna be looking at is not gonna be size scale, but it's gonna be time scale. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and then try to show me what the causal patterns would be kind of drifting back and forth between small time scale and long time scale. And uh, after you unpause the video, you could easier use paper or one of the thinking slides below. I'll show you my thinking. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I would put them all in order. So let me put them in order across the top. So if I were to look across the top, we had the handheld mobile, then the flip phone, then the Blackberry, and then the iPhone. Now this didn't turn into this, but something must have been going on that we can't see. Something at a different time scale that we can't see. So in my opinion, there is a set amount of money people can spend on a phone, but there must be different features that they're choosing. And so let me show you my causal patterns. Okay, one thing that was important over time is the ability to text people. But these early mobile handhelds, you couldn't text each other. You could just use a phone call. And so as a result, there was competition between these phones. There were low sales of the mobile handheld, which then showed higher sales of the flip phone. Let me show you what I think happened as we moved then towards the BlackBerry and the iPhone. So to show you what I think happened is uh, just like um, the problem with no texting, the problem with the flip phone is you can't do email. So that responded to lower sales of the flip phone and eventually higher sales in the Blackberry, which didn't have apps. There were low sales of that. And then we get the iPhone showing up. And so these would be causal patterns that I'm looking at at varying time scales. So as we just look from one phone to another, we can't see what's going on behind the scenes. And so that is causal patterns at varying scale. What I'd like to have you do is use a different object. So I've got thinking slides and videos of an old school tape recorder you could use or a little chemistry demonstration. And so the key thing in chemistry is size scale and in biology is gonna be time scale. Um, but I would take a look at those. Look, I've always got keys that you can use. Um, but that's just causal patterns at varying scale, and I hope that was helpful.